I'm Katherine Giles, and I'm the Curatorial Assistant of Invertebrate Zoology here at the Carnegie Museum of Natural History. I'm here to talk to you today about one of our largest and most underappreciated collections here in the section of invertebrate zoology, and that's our larval collection. It's through the legacy of Dr. John Rollins and through many of our other colleagues that we have so very many caterpillars and other larval representatives. This particular example is of an isofemale rearing. An isofemale rearing is when you go out into the field and you observe the taxa that you wish to collect and you make sure to capture females. You hope that the females have mated, and sometimes they haven't. Sometimes that means that, then that they are then sterile, and that's okay. But for those that have mated, you observe the egg laying process, the morphology of the eggs, the arrangement of the eggs, any color changes, any sculpture, any shape on the eggs, and then you observe their hatching. You observe then the larvae through their entire life cycle, through every larval instar, up through their pupil stage, and then on to an adult. You take an isofemale rearing and you do not mix cultures so that you have a parent representative of the taxa. So for these, we know that she did indeed mate and that she did have fertile eggs. And these are Arebid specimens, former family Arcteidae that got changed to Arebidae with the new classification. So in this specific jar, we have several larvae and we have several pupae. At a certain stage in larval development, we will select several larvae to pickle or several pupae to pickle. And in this case, we picked about five, five of each. Unfortunately, when you pickle something in alcohol, it does not retain its color. So it's very important whenever you want to pickle something that you have good photographs at each larval instar and at each stage of that larvae's life cycle. So it's very important when you're out in the field or you're taking care of a culture that you want to study to take very clear written notes. So what I've done here with this database is transcribe a lot of the information in notebooks like these from my predecessors and put it into a digital format where we can now search. So this one is 97-064. We'll go to page 97 and search for 064. And that is Apentesis nice. That is a tiger moth of the Arebidae family in the new taxonomic classification. They're really interesting and really hard to identify. Um, so I'm very glad that we have these larval specimens that we can also refer back to. Here in the section of invertebrate zoology, we get a lot of identification requests from just your average Joe on the street. And a lot of times our first question for them is actually, What's the locality of your specimen? And when we say that, we mean, can you give us the city, state, county, anything more about where you collected the specimen in question? Any of that information can significantly help us correctly identify your specimen.